Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our open morning event for boarding. Um, I hope that uh, this finds you well, uh, and I'm really delighted as headmaster of Ipswich School, my name is Nicholas Weaver, to introduce you to our school and to some of the key staff who will be involved in your boarding journey, if, as we hope, that will be with us. So, first of all, let me introduce you to uh, Mrs Justine Christie who is our head of boarding, Justine. Yes, hello everyone, uh, good morning to you. Um, I am the house parent at Westwood, so I look after the youngsters that are with us here, um, but I'm also the head of boarding, um, so I follow the children all the way through their boarding experience and making sure they're okay. Brilliant, so Justine will say a few more words about the experience of a boarder at Ipswich School a bit later on. So then I'd like to introduce you to uh, Mrs. Laura Trainer. Laura is our admissions manager. Over to you, Laura. Hi, um, so we've spoken to quite a few of you already. So I will speak to families and agents from the point of inquiry all the way up to uh, pupils flying over and joining us. Uh, and then I pass them over to my colleague Hugh. Yeah, so uh, let's introduce Hugh. So this is Hugh Millington is in charge of international admissions, does a fantastic job with, well, Hugh, do you want to describe all the things that you do to help our boarders? Well, I'm completely focused on boarding in my job and I'm spread across the admissions office where I'm sitting now, where I work with Laura Trainer, And then I also work with Justine Christie and Rebecca Halford thompson our other house parent in both boarding houses. And I look after pupils from the point of inquiry and admissions all the way to when they leave, especially focusing on their travel arrangements and making sure they're safe during the holidays. Yeah, and so that's such an important thing, particularly in this uh, difficult year uh, that we've had, getting all those travel arrangements with quarantine, uh, making sure people are safe in holidays, whether, whether they're staying in the UK or going home. So thank you, Hugh. So that's the team, uh, and we'll be available uh, at the end of uh, some short presentations here to answer any questions that you may have, those of you who are watching, um, about the boarding experience here, about the admissions, about any aspect of our, our life at Ipswich School. So um, I'm going to show you some pictures just to illustrate what I'm going to talk to you about. So here we are. This is the um, main um, entrance building at Ipswich School. This is where I am sitting at the moment within this building. And this uh, building has been here since uh, 1852. The school has been uh, on this side and in this building, but we have a much longer and richer history than that. We go back probably to the 1200s um, is when the school started in Ipswich. We've got a, a long and distinguished history. We are the only school mentioned in the works of William Shakespeare, uh, and we're very proud of our, our historic tradition, but we're also very proud to be a very modern school and forward-looking and giving a, a really excellent 21st century education to everybody who comes here. For those of you who aren't uh, too familiar with the geography uh, of the UK, just to show you where we are, you can see is zoomed in on a bit of the UK. You can see where London is, where Ipswich is, and how we're connected with the airports at Stansted, how we're connected to London, and uh, nearby to Cambridge. And in fact, we're just 20 minutes away from the coast. So um, a very popular trip for our borders is to, is to go sometimes to our, uh, the local beaches. Um, so lots to do. But um, I want to tell you a little bit more about Ipswich School and just to give you some idea about what we as a school are about. And for that, I want to talk to these really important points, which are our core values. So we spent some time a few years ago just trying to distill for ourselves exactly what it is that Ipswich School represents. What are our core values? And you'll see these on our website. And we believe that everything we do is illustrated um, and guided by these. So our first one uh, is care. And the most important care is our care for our students. And never is that more important than within boarding. So we are a reasonably big school. We have about 850 pupils in the senior school. We have 60 to 70 boarders. So boarders are a small number. And across everything we do, our boarding and our whole school 
however big we are, we aim to know each individual as a person and we get to know them in detail so that we can really care for their personal needs. And that's really important. But another thing that's important about this core value is that we encourage each other, uh, each of our students to care for each other, to care for their place in the community and in the world. Because as you'll learn today, our aim in our education is to make people who will be excellent as they go out into the world of university or work and, and be wonderful citizens. So our uh, next core value listed here is communication. And we uh, think that our communication is very good. We're continually working on it. We want to communicate very well around the triangle we call the pupil, parent, and school triangle. We think that's very important to communicate um, uh, so that you will get good information at home in families about what's going on at school and that you will always uh, feel comfortable that you know what's going on. But then uh, these two uh, P's, passion and potential, are the words which define how we go about an Ipswich School education. So I didn't get into teaching because I wanted to um, get anybody a grade nine or an A star. I got into teaching because I loved my subject, which happened to be uh, physics. And I wanted to share my passion uh, for physics with my students and along the way I think I was quite successful in doing that when I was teaching physics and many of them got A stars and got grade nines but it underpins everything that we do whether it's in the classroom or outside the classroom our teachers are passionate our coaches are passionate everybody is passionate about the bit that they do to contribute to an Ipswich school education and we hope that that passion is infectious that our students will catch it and then they will do brilliantly well uh, as they develop themselves as far as their potential will allow. And that's our promise to you, that, um, that, that our education is not limiting to your children or to you if you're a student or a potential student here, that you can go as far as your potential will take you. So I'm now just going to show you um, the pictures of our two boarding houses. So this one uh, is Westwood, which is uh, the house that Mrs. Christie is speaking to you from um, this morning. And you can see it's set uh, in lovely uh, uh, surroundings, of country, tree, uh, park sort of area. It's only a short walk from the school. It's about 500 metres up the road from the school. And it also has a, a, a little sports um, pitch next to it. AstroTurf pitch there you can see uh, as well as its own grounds and then just over the road from the main school site we have our sixth form boarding house which is our newest boarding house and we have just had this open for one year and this is occupied by our year 13 pupils and we um, we just bought this new property over the road and we we refurbished it so each of those rooms is very much like a university student room with its own ensuite uh, bathroom facilities. And we thought our year 13s moving into there would have an ideal preparation for their next stage. So it's, it's a bit more of a moving on house preparation for university and beyond when they're in there. Now, um, if we can just come back to me, yes, uh, you may uh, be interested in both of those settings and you may want to, to see a little bit more of those and we've got a virtual tour on our website which is ready to go for you it's it's open uh, and that allows you to in virtual reality to to get inside the houses to look round to see um, an example of uh, of bedrooms in different locations to see the dining areas to see the communal areas and to move around so when you go on to our website and, and look for the virtual boarding tour you'll see what we call a doll's house view. So you can move and rotate the house around. And then if you click into that, it takes you in there and then you have this virtual reality experience. So you can see for yourselves what it's like to be actually inside the buildings. Uh, so you have a good look around there uh, and that'll give you an idea. You'll also be able to see on our website some videos about our boarding and about school life as well, which will have the words from our students 
Uh, and I think they're the people who will tell you um, quite a lot about the lived experience of being a student here, being a boarder here. But um, to tell you a little bit more about the sort of routines and the experiences of the boarders today, I'm going to hand over to Mrs. Christie, who's going to tell you a little bit more about boarding at Ipswich School. Over to you, Justine. Thank you, Headmaster. Great. Saskia, can I have the picture of um, Westwood back? Thank you. So yes, as the headmaster said, this is Westwood. Um, it's a five minute walk um, from the main school site. Um, it's a beautiful Victoria, Victorian building um, surrounded by beautiful lawns um, and woodland. It houses 47 boarders um, currently in year nine to 12. Um, so middle school and the lower sixth form. Um, they have lots of shared common areas where they can be together and socialise, but our accommodation um, is um, separate for um, sleeping. The Anglesey Heights area, this, as the headmaster said, is predominantly for our year 13. It's all en suite, um, and it's here to provide a very bespoke experience for our year 13 boarders. We hope that we can support them um, as they go through things like their preparation for university, uh, their mock examinations. And the whole idea is that they're going through an incredibly shared experience together. Um, they gain a lot of experience as they get ready for their next step. Both houses have well-qualified staff looking after them. We have people like myself who are house parents. We have household staff that look after the running of the household, we have evening tutors, um, and we have our own chef. So what is life like here for the boarders? Well, the matrons in the morning, get them up, get them down to breakfast. That happens on a school day at about 7.30 to eight o'clock. Um, and by 8.30, they make their way into school. At the end of the school day, they come back to Westwood uh, for their supper. They're greeted by the matrons, they chat to them, the matrons listen to what they've got to say um, and share their great experiences. They're there for advice um, and someone to talk to. And the matrons are there for about seven o'clock in the evening. The matrons also look after um, any medical issues. So if the children are not feeling well, no matter how small that might be, they will talk to matrons um, and they'll make medical appointments um, if that's required. In the evenings after supper, there's prep time, and prep time is supervised by our school tutors. They come up, um, get the children settled into prep, will help them with their homework. The prep, the PSC, is done in children's rooms if they're senior boarders, so 11s, to, 11s and 12s are allowed to do their homework, their PSC, uh, in their bedrooms. We pop round and make sure everything's going okay. Our younger boarders do their PSC downstairs um, so we can more actively support them um, in that. Then they have some free time. Um, they can go in their rooms, use the Astro. We've got uh, a nice games room. We have our own music rooms um, for practice, um, TV areas, um, and a small study area. So they socialize for a little while, and then it's time for bed. And um, the evening tutor goes around, make sure everything's OK before they go off. Um, and that's that for that evening. So the weekend routine is slightly different on Saturday mornings. Um, the children get up and um, have their um, extra English lessons. Um, they will have just extra English um, in years uh, nine to 11, but in year 12, we start preparing them for their IELTS exams. After their English lessons, there's a lovely brunch, um, which they all enjoy. And that brunch, the sort of 11 o'clock breakfast allows the children to go down into town for the afternoon without having to hang around for lunch and then going into town or having to cancel lunch. They really like that. That was, was a student's decision um, and it's worked uh, really well. So they tend to go into town on a Saturday, go to the cinema, meet their day pupil friends. They can go down to the marina. There's lots to do um, in Ipswich. Saturday evenings can be um, a movie night or an activity. Um, and bedtime is about half an hour later. Bedtimes on Saturdays and uh, Friday nights 
um, the children are allowed their phones, but younger boarders, uh, nines and tens, hand their devices in before bedtime on Sunday to Thursday nights. This means that we're making sure that they have a good night's sleep. On some days, the children do like a lazy morning. So we have what's called a lazy breakfast, where there's a bigger time span in which they might pop down and have something. So the continental breakfast um, is there for them. Then there's lunch um, at about one o'clock. And then we have activities or trips on the Sunday. These activities can be household based, making things, doing things together, having a competition in the garden. Um, or they might be further afield. We try and go to very famous local places um, so they understand the area and appreciate the area that they're living in. Suffolk is very beautiful and we want them to see um, what's around on their doorstep. Then we might have trips that are further afield. So we might take them down to somewhere like Buckingham Palace. Um, we might take them to um, Hampton Court. But there's also trips and activities that they are really excited about. They like to go to Warner Brothers Studios to see the Harry Potter things. They like to um, go to theme parks. So we're looking forward to when all those things uh, return. Uh, Sunday evenings is not a fixed uh, homework time, but the house is quiet for a couple of hours in the evening. If anyone needs to get some work ready um, for Mondays, um, and then it's on um, for the normal uh, week. That's predominantly uh, what happens at Westwood where I'm the house parent. Um, I look after their, I look after them like a parent would. I'm the local parentess. I meet them every breakfast time and I see them every supper time and I also have duties that they do. Um, they come to me um, to talk about anything really. They can talk about how well their day's gone. If they um, are in school and they want to talk about an aspect of their school life, um, they, would, they would come to me matrons as well as dealing with their um sort of medical needs also look after things like the laundry um, and the cleaning of the house so they will talk to matrons about that at anglesey heights the day runs slightly differently we are trying for them to really uh, look after themselves and become disciplined um, so for them there's no wake-up call they have to get themselves up um, and get themselves um, across the school for their um, breakfast that they have together on the school site, but it is just them. So they have to um, sort out their own laundry. We do the laundry for them, but they have to go and take it to the laundry room, make their own beds, um, and just a few more chores. The staff at uh, Westwood also work down at Anglesey Heights. So, um, there is some continuation of care. The staff that knew them in year 12 will also uh, know them in year 13. And so there is some continu continuity of care there. The focus at Westwood, as I said, is years uh, nine to 12. Um, so middle school and the beginning of the sixth form, they have different needs. Um, and we have staff that work in school that know what their school life is like. My assistant house parent, um, Charlotte Cooley, is a maths teacher and a year nine tutor. Uh, Mr. Gall, who's a non-resident tutor, uh, works in the games department. At Anglesey Heights, the graduate sports um, assistants um, help with the children down there. They're fabulous. They have a lot of energy. Um, the children like having uh, younger members of staff down there. Um, they have some more shared cultural experiences with them. The, both houses are relatively small. We have 47 up at Westwood and up to 27 um, at Anglesey Heights. And I think this gives a lovely homely feel in both houses. The children know each other um, well. And I think that brings about mutual respect and understanding in the houses. It's a, a nice um, homely feel. So that's really uh, what we offer in um, boarding. We offer a, a safe, uh, caring environment. Both houses have really do follow the school call values, um, but we also have our own ethos, which is respect, which is respect for one another, respect for the house, respect for themselves, and respect for the staff. 
um, and I'm very proud um, the children subscribe to that. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Justine, uh, and that's wonderful to hear all of those descriptions and uh, to share that. And, and I hope that for those viewing, then it's quite clear why when we get our boarding inspections uh, coming, that they give us such a, a glowing report in, in terms of all that we do uh, with our borders. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to go in, uh, on to tell you a little bit more about uh, our education uh, and, and how we do that in the school day. I just want to um, pause to say, if you have any questions that occur to you as we go, then please do put them into the uh, chat functions, I think, uh, if you're watching on YouTube or uh, Facebook, uh, or um, do email them in or, or text them in to the um, uh, to the numbers up up here. So either in the comments or email or text those numbers up there. Um, uh, Justine mentioned the extra English lessons. Obviously, those are for people who for whom English is not their first language. For our UK borders, um, we don't tend to do that. Um, you will have seen that our houses uh, are there for boys and girls. And so we obviously have very separated accommodation for them, uh, for the for them their rooms and for sleeping. And that, that's all completely segregated. But then the community for meal times and, and for recreation activities and so on uh, is, a, is a very good co-ed mix. And Justine also mentioned how some things came about because the students had asked for them. And I think it's really important to know that the student voice is very important in how we run uh, our boarding and we we listen very carefully to the wishes and uh, and the requests of our boarders when we're designing what we do and so we respond very much particularly with our catering and food uh, with what we do there so if i just turn my attention now to our school so uh, we're very proud of our academic success as a school we get some wonderful gcse results um, they're the best uh, results in the area, um, so so we're really proud of those high grades, which again come from the passion of our teachers. Um, so we get all of those um, excellent grades at A level. It's a similar story, and you can see there that over half of our grades at A level are A star or A, and um, that's that's excellent. But it's not really about the grades; it's where those get you. And our sixth formers tend to go on to uh, really excellent universities. So you can see there just uh, the, some of the popular destinations there, some of the top class universities in uh, the UK. But we also have people going on to, um, to, to universities outside the UK as well. So uh, as well as uh, these um, Russell Group or competitive or conservatoires, so these really high numbers of students getting into there, good number getting into Oxbridge, good numbers in uh, medicine, veterinary and dentistry, which is highly competitive, so difficult to get in. Um, we also have from time to time people going off to Stanford in the US, uh, into, into um, other uh, universities as well around the world. And we've got an excellent careers department, our um, uh, assistant head of sixth form mr calvert runs our careers department he also runs our medics program so for children interested in a career as a doctor um we've got a, a bespoke program for them but we believe that to be successful in life and successful at university and in the world of work afterwards people should be more rounded than just um students who've got excellent exam grades and so we provide a wealth of opportunities um, whether that's in our, our focus sports, we have um, hockey. Um, we've got four people who will be travelling to Tokyo um, for the GB squads. Um, two of them in the team, uh, men and women, and then two others in the reserve list who are former pupils. Uh, we also have um, uh, cricket. And there's um, some of our boys and girls cricket um, there. And we have... Uh, silver medalist that team there uh, and then we have uh, our rugby and netball as well which is just I think we've just seen the slide there it is rugby and netball but it uh, as well as those there are options for people to do sports in in other uh, spheres so if we can just um, turn the slides off just for a moment there 
yeah so um there are choices so not everybody uh, who, who is uh, particularly as they're more senior in the school wants to do one of our focus sports but we believe that um, some physical activity is part of a healthy lifestyle and we want to encourage everybody to find something that they can do and that might be that they enjoy going on a run around the park or they do some yoga or pilates or or, or some different activities tennis um uh, as well we, we we've got um lots of different activities that uh, they can do physically we also believe that uh, we give our students an edge we give them an advantage when they leave our school and and particularly that's through our life skills program and our life skills program runs throughout the school but when you get to the sixth form it is called the edge and you can see some of our former sixth formers here doing some of the life skills activities so there they are um, doing some cooking, practicing for when they're cooking for their student flats when they're away at university. There's also uh, a week away in Devon doing some outward bound activities. You can see there um, and in our next pictures, you'll see some more. Some of our boarders actually um, doing some of those outward bound and team building activities. As well as these, they get some talks in uh, life skills, self-defense, student finance, uh, the law, first aid, car maintenance. Um, um, we have lots of, lots of um, excellent discussions and we feel that after that, uh, and a, a module I should have mentioned as well, in mental health in the workplace and, and the importance that has and how we can look after ourselves and others around us. Um, when they've had all of those, as well as their studies, we know that we're fulfilling that brief given to us by um, employers and universities. He said, we don't just want people who've got excellent exam results. We want people who can be really fine contributors to uh, the world they find themselves in. Um, but it's not just about sport and the edge. We have a fantastic drama department. Here's a couple of shots from some of our shows recently. Um, and we have great participation. Some of our, our students prefer to be backstage and, and uh, uh, in charge of the lighting and sound and things. Others prefer to be on stage. Um, they like to also perhaps be on stage in our, our music ensembles. We've got a wonderful music ensemble and we're just planning for our annual uh, concert in Snape Maltings, which is a world-class concert venue which is very near to us here. It was set up by Benjamin Britten, the, the uh, world-renowned composer. And we go there every year. And uh, I, I'm proud to say that when, when we are there and when I talk to the staff of that venue, they, they just say, we are blown away by the quality of music that your students produce. It is wonderful. We don't see this from any other school. It's fantastic. Um, but there are so many other clubs and activities. Um, I think we've got a couple more pictures here of our um, our cadets there on the right, on the left. We've got the model House of Commons doing some political debating. We have things like Lego robotics, as I said, stage lighting, people doing community service in primary schools and helping out, uh, eco club, uh, people doing um, growing vegetables, which we share with a local um home for for people with learning difficulties in adult life we've got some wonderful clubs which are, our borders get well stuck into and it helps them to develop and when they look back and when we meet our alumni um as we love to do uh, it's often these extra things that they remember most fondly um not everyone remembers their sixth form economics lesson um but people often remember when they made a difference to someone's life outside in a community service activity or something that they did on their duke of edinburgh award um uh, expedition so i hope i've given you a flavor there of uh, what it is to have an education at ipswich school we think a rounded um education is um it, it is a mixture of the academic and the non-academic so uh, I think that's drawn us to a close there and it's time for us to um, to take some questions. And I think we've got the first question there. So how many borders do you have and how many are international? So uh, as I think we said, so um, we have a number of um, occasional borders who join in. So our, our boarding population sort of fluctuates a little bit. 
um, but 47 in Westwood and up to 27 in Anglesey Heights. So, so we around about the 70 mark. Um, the majority of those, I would say, are international, but we have a good number of UK borders. Some of them are full borders. Some of them are occasional and perhaps board up to three nights a week. And certainly since we've opened our sixth form house, then we've had um, more interest in our UK students, day students, but wanting to have that experience of learning to live as, as they might do in university. So we, we've seen an increased popularity in that. Um, is there a good integration with our day pupils? Well, I think there really is. So all of our pupils go to school in a day school, even if they're boarders. They, they leave the house in the morning, they go to school for a full day, and then they come home in the evening. They're not popping back to the house all the time and, and just having their own bubble, as it were, within the, the house. Although in these times, COVID times, we use the word bubble for different means. We, we do keep everyone safe. Um, so, so there is a um, there, there is a, a, a good mixing within the day school environment, and a number of our overseas boarders then uh, make friends with local families, and we often find that they get invited round to those houses of people locally and integrate very well uh, there too. Uh, Justine, I don't know if you want to say a little bit more. Definitely. I, I totally uh, um, agree with you there. There is good integration. Um, it is lovely when you hear um, that um, boarders are going to a friend's house for a Friday or a Saturday evening or parents invite them around for things like cream teas. They really embrace the international student and want them to um, experience what life like in the UK, but also um, the Suffolk experience. They'll take them crabbing, um, catching little crabs and, and things that we do um, locally. Um, but I also really encourage the border to say if they want a day pupil, their friend in their tutor group or one of their subjects, to either stay the night in boarding or just come for supper or pop up to play on the Astro. So sometimes when we have trip and activities, um, I offer them the opportunity to uh, invite a friend. If there's limited spaces, I tend to allow that for the senior boarder. Um, but no, there's great, there's great mixing. Yeah, and I know from my own children uh, who've had some friends in the boarding house how how uh, that's been very valuable. Um, we've got another question here. Do we have XAACs? So actually, no, we don't. We we run through term time all the way through. Um, we don't have any, we don't have Saturday school as a school. So we don't have any specific weekends. We have our half term holidays and our um, end of term holidays. The rest of the time, we're in full session um, and in this most unusual of years that we've just had as well we've kept the boarding house open even through the holidays because of the difficulties people have had with transport and because although normally uh, often our, our people might go to guardians um, in the midst of a pandemic some people felt uh, rightly so that they they had a great safety in the boarding house so there's a huge confidence i think in the way that we were looking after people and keeping it a covid safe environment and so um, it was a great pleasure for us to be able to um just just look after those children through christmas and through easter as well and, and give them in this uh, one-off year a real experience of of what a uk christmas was about and there's a question here for uh, you, Justine. Uh, if my child goes out after school, what time do they have to be back? Are they even allowed out after school? Um, so there's, there is a expectation that children will be focused on getting back, getting changed, having supper, um, doing schoolwork that, that they might have to do for the, um, for the next day. Um, but like any parent, I'd say, well, what, what is it that you want to do? And if they've got a chance to do something really lovely, um, then I would want to have some degree of flexibility about that. So the, there is an expectation to be in the normal run um, on a Sunday to Thursday. Um, and I would talk to them about, I would then ring, uh, if they were going to someone's house, I'd ring and, and, and negotiate at the time they were coming back. So I think this is the beauty of having just 47 children to look after that there is and the expectation and then then there's what's allowed often the children just want to pop into town to get something for the evening can i pop in and get um some more stationery can i pop in and get some shower gel all these things are available but they love 
going to choose their own thing. And it's marvellous because they're literally a two minute walk from the school site um, to the shops. Um, and then I would say, you know, I, we would talk about how soon they need to be back and keeping in contact with us. It's very useful. They all have a UK SIM. So we're, in, we're texting all the time. Yeah, that's right. So, so these days we can keep um, we can keep uh, in, in touch with our borders uh, with their phones and their, their UK sims, yeah. and that's important um, because you know that care is not just about looking after their needs when they're with us. It's about caring for them and their safety wherever they are, and that's really important. Um, Will international pupils have access to EAL during the week and help at school? I'll take that question. Yes, they absolutely do. So our, our EAL teacher, um, Mrs. Calver, who looks after them on Saturday mornings, will also be able to see them in school and they uh, are able to access the learning support department in its entirety all the way through. Some of our international students uh, might not take one of our, our foreign languages and they have some extra time and they can use that as consolidation time in, in uh, liaison with the learning support department just to make sure that their subjects they are studying come up to up to speed. Hmm. Okay, so Justine, here's a question for you. My child is joining this September. Should they buy a uniform before they arrive or can they go to a shop when they arrive? So um, do feel free to email me. The, um, what I'm hoping is that if your child is quarantining, um, then we will have we will um, be sending out an email soon saying please measure your child um, and then we'll order the uniform that we know they need for the first term we're not going to over buy and then when they arrive they can try the uniform on while they're quarantining um, but you um, if they're not quarantining with us they can still do the same thing they can have um, the uniform delivered to Westwood for when they arrive and then do any swaps um, if something doesn't fit um, but yes, you can um, go into um, COS where the children will get the uniform, um, and there's um, you need to book online that appointment. And of course, it needs to be when the quarantine is over. So, so we're very close. So our uniform supplier is just down the road from us. Mm. It's very close by. Very um, happy to support you with that. It's a, it's a, it's it's very important not to. Uh, over by uh, uniform so it's uh, I don't want to be controlling but let us support you with that yeah absolutely keep in touch because uh, I hope you can get at uh, home you can get the flavor from from everything we said that we really want to support you as families we want to communicate well so if you've got any concerns just just email them in and one of our team will be able to help you with that and we'll be able to help you um, with with uniform, with whatever um, questions there are. Mm. Um, in in this year, it's been slightly different uniform-wise, hasn't it? We've had, um, yes. uh, under government advice, we had people wearing more sports kits um, so that they didn't have to change as much. And we, I think we're going to, to have on games days, so often our, our peoples will have two sports days a, a week. They will wear sports kits in the mornings ready for their games and their sports in the afternoons um so so but three days a week for most people they'll be wearing the the suit and the and the formal shirt and and um and so on so so it's just about getting the right quantities of those and getting those right but um uh, uh, justin mentioned the laundry um earlier and we've got excellent um we, we've got excellent uh, facilities there and our laundry team are wonderful at turning things around uh, and looking after that for our borders. Um, so, so yeah, we, I've got a question here about what range of nationalities. Um, well, next year we're going to have Italian, German, Russian, South Korean, Ukrainian, uh, uh, China, UK, uh, Hong Kong. So, yes, we've got that. That's the range, I think, in the boarding house I think we're going to have next year. Um, and that's good. That's not, you know, we've had people from other nations as well in the past, but that just gives you a summary of what uh, it's going to look like um, next year. I think we might be out of questions there. I think we've answered everybody's questions. So, yeah, it looks like we have. 
So I think uh, I, I will draw things to a close then. Uh, I, I hope everybody at, at home has enjoyed this presentation. I hope we've been able to give you, as I, as I said, a really important flavour of everything that we do, um, that we have been able to, to share with you what it will be like to be at it. You can find out more of the environment by going and looking on the virtual tour. You can find out more about our children's experience by looking at them speaking on the video. And of course, you can find out more specific detail if you email in or um, have a question for one of our team, and we'd be only too delighted to answer your questions uh, after the event. Okay, so for now, we're going to sign off. Thank you very much to Laura, to Hugh, and to Justine, and thank you to you at home for watching, and we hope we'll see you very soon.